Hi, Man of Family. Today we're studying a conversation between a wise prophet and a foolish king. It's October 12th, 539 BC, and the situation in the Babylonian Empire is dire. The city of Babylon is under siege by the Persian army. Instead of defending the city, King Belshazzar, Nebuchadnezzar's grandson, is throwing a huge party in the palace where every single appetite is being indulged. In light of an imminent attack, he should have been praying and preparing, not partying. Incredibly, he orders that the sacred gold and silver vessels that were captured from the Jewish temple be brought out and used at this drunken orgy. Then God crashes his party. Daniel 5.5 says, Suddenly, the fingers of a human hand emerged and began writing opposite the lampstand on the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. The story says that everyone's terrified and no one can interpret the meaning of the writing. Eventually, the queen mother advises them to call the 80-year-old prophet Daniel out of retirement. Daniel arrives and has a little come-to-Jesus meeting with Belshazzar, Daniel 5.16. O king, the Most High God granted sovereignty, greatness, honor, and majesty to Nebuchadnezzar, your father. Verse 20, But when his heart was arrogant and his spirit became so overbearing that he behaved presumptuously, he was deposed from his royal throne and his dignity was taken away from him. Earlier on in the book of Daniel, it's revealed that God had given Nebuchadnezzar the Babylonian Empire to rule and then warned him against pride by giving him a dream which Daniel interpreted. But Nebuchadnezzar later boasted that Babylon existed for the majesty of his glory, not God's glory. So God took away his reason, and he went insane. He literally thought that he was an animal, and so they put him in one of the royal parks, probably. He lived with the animals for seven years until God restored his reason and restored the throne. Nebuchadnezzar's response to this is found in Daniel 4.34, and Nebuchadnezzar says, I, Nebuchadnezzar, raised my eyes toward heaven, and my reason returned to me, and I blessed the Most High and praised and honored him who lives forever. Verse 37, all God's works are true and his ways just, and he is able to humble those who walk in pride. So Daniel tells Belshazzar, you knew this. Daniel 5.22, in front of God and everybody at this big banquet, Daniel says to Belshazzar, you, his son, Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart, even though you knew all this that had happened to his father, Nebuchadnezzar. But you have risen up against the Lord of heaven, and you have praised the gods of silver and of gold, of bronze, iron, wood, and stone, which do not see, nor hear, nor understand. But the God in whose hand are your life, breath, and all your ways, you have not glorified. See, Belshazzar had seen his father's pride as well as his humiliation and his repentance and his restoration to the throne after he humbled himself. And Belshazzar still chose to dishonor God and to mock him by using sacred vessels that were set apart for the worship of God in the temple, and he brought them in and used them in this drunken orgy. He took what was dedicated to God and used it with sin with full knowledge. Now, the God of the Bible is a merciful God, but he's also a just God, and he will always judge sin. We just don't know when. In Daniel 5.24, it says, The hand of the Lord was sent from him, from God, and this inscription was written out. Verse 25, Now, this is the inscription that was written. This is what was written on the wall of the banquet hall in front of all the guests. Mene, mene, tikal, eupharsin. This is the interpretation of the message. Mene, God has numbered your kingdom and put an end to it. Tickle, you have been weighed on the scales and found deficient. Perez, your kingdom has been divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Verse 30, that same night Belshazzar the Chaldean king was killed, so Darius the Mede received the kingdom at about age 62. God had taken away Nebuchadnezzar's mind, and now he took away Belshazzar's life. There is a time and a season for everything. 
including our birth and death, and including the birth and death of nations and empires. The Persians conquered Babylon that very night. God controls everything from galaxies to subatomic particles, including nations and presidents. Everything we possess is loaned by God, and everyone will give an account to God for how they manage what belongs to him. God gives us free will, and everyone will either choose to live life God's way, as revealed in the Bible, or rebel against God's way and live life our way. The Bible says that prideful nations and prideful people will be judged by God. It doesn't say when and it doesn't say how, but it says it will happen. However, as Nebuchadnezzar showed us, when you humble yourself before the Lord, you can experience God's blessing and that judgment. That way, God gives us his grace and expresses that through Jesus Christ who died on the cross for our sins. So we don't have to pay the penalty for our sin because Jesus did it on our behalf. Like Daniel, when your faith is in the Lord, you can dare to be a Daniel and speak God's word without fear. Daniel, even though 80 years old, had walked with the Lord for all these decades, and when he had an opportunity to speak the truth and represent God, he did it with faith and truth. Go and do likewise. Remember, God designed us to do life together together.